Hey everyone, welcome to a pickup video here. I'm trying to talk around my cat, so hopefully you hear me. I have a few minutes to spare here, so I thought I would show hardware and uh, movies. I know movies aren't for everyone, so I'll save that to the end. Uh, longer break than anticipated, shortly after making the last video, a co-worker of mine passed away. He worked in another state, and I wasn't too close with him, but he was really popular in the field. So a lot of the people that work with us like them. My dad was friends with them for about 15 years. Um, that led to the entire division shutting down. They were basically a family-owned and operated company that another company bought. And the second one hired us to assist them. And I've just been working with them every day for five years now. He was training some of his kids to take his place. But uh, neither one of them were able to learn enough in time. And so when he passed, they just shut it all down. So I've been reassigned. And it's... I've never seen something collapse so quickly. Uh, a few weeks after that, my grandma passed away. Uh, she never got to come back from her evacuation in Jonesboro. So we've been cleaning up her house and just been busy with that. But I finally have a few minutes here. So I have a lot of software to show because I haven't showed any pickups for like eight or nine months. Uh, but this is just going to be hardware, like controllers, consoles, and um, movies. So I'll get the big ones out of the way here. First up is... Um, Unseen is the PS5 controller. Uh, that's charging because I've been playing Demon Souls every single day. Finally going to beat it. I'm on the second to last boss. I played it a bunch for the PS3, but I never got as far as I did with this one. I'm just determined now. Um, I got really lucky with these. For the PlayStation 5, I pre-ordered it because I think it was in between evacuations. I was on my cell phone, which was on mobile internet, which was really spotty at the time. Still kind of is. And... I was just looking around because I was bored. It was late. I couldn't sleep. And someone posted that, um, or a news article went up, that the PS5 was on sale early. Went to Best Buy, and I was able to place it in the cart easily, but I couldn't check out. So I just kept refreshing until, I don't know, five, a few minutes in. It just went through. I honestly thought they were going to cancel it, but nope. I got it a uh, day after launch. Uh, the Xbox, I was really lucky on that one. Walmart announced they were going to have a few consoles available on the day of launch. So I loaded up the Walmart app, and at that exact moment, which was 11 or 12 my time, uh, one came up in stock. I immediately pressed buy, and it turned out it was in a few towns away, a location probably about half an hour away. Uh, hopped in the car, went over there, and I think it was the only one around this area I was able to get. I really wanted the, the Xbox more than the PS5 because I have a 1S, and if you use one of those, that is rough. Playing multi-platform games and comparing them with the PS4 Pro, they run really bad. So I was really looking forward to the, the Xbox with uh, all the backwards compatibility, the Game Pass, and all that. And so far, it hasn't let me down. It's been a lot of fun, but I spent most of my time with Demon's Souls. After that, I'm going to bounce around to some new titles I bought and some Game Pass titles. But uh, got those two beauties. They're so big, I put them behind my TV, which actually doesn't look too bad. It makes the con the uh, center console look pretty sleek, but they are way too large to just put in front of the TV. Um, on the ODE front, <laughs> what I'm going to show you here is a PlayStation 1 board that is completely broke. Um, I was able to get in an X station, which is an ODE replacement. You use SD cards to play games. And if you see here... I was able to do the hard part, which is pull these pins away. Took a few minutes, but so far, I mean, it was going pretty good. Really clean pulls here. Uh, then I went to the supposedly easy part, which is installing a quick release board or QSB or something, which is supposed to just solder onto some existing points. Uh, I actually have... Where is it? I had it over here, but... The original one, the problem ended up being I couldn't find the manual to install it. I used, I went on their GitHub, there was nothing. Well, it turns out for some reason when I look at GitHub on my phone, there is no manual. If I look at it on my browser, the links are at the top. So I tried to go off a YouTube video, and I was really more interested in, in the pins portion. So after I learned that, the, the guy kind of fast-forwarded as he was soldering all these points. So I did it, and I couldn't get one to work. And it turns out towards the end of the video, he shows that you actually have to scrape some material off of the board because it's like anti-solder or something. The metal basically would go up the iron tip away from the board. Well, in the process, I ended up uh, ruining one of the traces on the other on the um, 
X Station sister board. So I ordered a replacement. Those were only like $13. Got it in, but when I pulled off the one I had installed, I ruined some traces. Now I, I don't have the equipment or the skill to, to put down a new trace. So this was ruined. So I bought another broken PS1. Hopefully it's got to be a certain board here. You see it's 18. It's got to be an 18 for it to work. I've read they are working on uh, compatibility with alternate versions, but the 18's most compatible. And uh, most PS1's are broken because of the CD drive. Uh, largely, you're not going to have a problem with the board or power supplies that I found. And if I do, the, the power supply and stuff with this one's fine. I just need a new board. So I bought a broken one, or untested for $5 off of eBay. Hopefully, I didn't ruin the other sister board when I removed it from it. It was over here. Um, here it is. So this is what it looks like. Oh, this is the one I ruined. Um, it's got nine points, I think. It actually installs like this. Well, on the far right and the far left are two points that you have to scrape the, the material off. And I end up, when I was pulling it off, burning the cable. So this was all junk anyway. But this is the, the easy thing that I have messed up now. And I really should find the replacement one. Um, but moving on, one of the projects I did during quarantine was um, I wanted to modify my controllers, and so I did. This is my old fight stick. I never actually finished it, as you can tell. I've been trying to find something to border with it. I tried this adhesive. It did not work. The colors kind of match, but uh, I can't cut it fine enough, and it doesn't stick well enough. It's already come up on the corners, as you see. But this is my kind of rough-and-ready joystick. I use this for the PC, PS3. Uh, this was a PS3 Brawl stick I modified with Sandwall parts. Um, it's compatible with PS3 and PC right off the box, but install installed is a uh, MC... Cthulhu Toodle or Toodle Cthulhu, something like that. It's a kind of an all-in-one board. It supports, you know, all the older stuff, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, um, GameCube, Saturn, Genesis, TurboGrafx-16, everything you can think of by way of a J45 port, which is an Ethernet port. So you see here, this is a GameCube control uh, cable. One end is an Ethernet jack, and the other goes into the GameCube. Uh, fortunately, the way the board's set up, I can leave this with the original, uh, well, this is an extended cable. I can leave it for it to default to PS3 PC, and if I put in a secondary one, it will default to the secondary one. So, I always have it ready for PC, PS3, and I bought these for $12.95 each. I bought one for about six different systems, and that way this can run on all of those. I need to find a way to to store this though. This does not come with any sort of uh, cable holder so I've just taped it for the time. But this is my kind of uh, tumble one or rough and ready like I said. It tumbles around, beat it up. I had this one sitting around for ages. Ugh. This is the Tournament 1 fight stick for 360 and PC. I did the same thing in here except I want a little bit more. It's got the uh, Brook Ultimate Fighting Board here. It's got a cable that runs here to a connector, and that runs to a board here called the uh, Retro Fighting Board, something like that. The Retro Board is similar to the other one in that you also use uh, J45 to use cables for other systems. So these cables work on both controllers. And similarly, I left the USB installed. Or actually, I didn't. This is a uh, J45 to USB to work on PS3 and all that. So what happens is... When you plug in the controller, this is PS3, PS4, Xbox 360, Xbox One. It also works for the uh, Sony PlayStation Classic, the, the little Neo Geo uh, cabinet that came out, and what I think it's Wii. Now, it's supposed to be compatible with the Xbox Series X. I cannot get it to work. To bypass the retro board, you're supposed to hold Start and Select, and then you press any button you want for it to be compatible with the system. That does not work for me at all. It will not recognize it. It actually just uh, it desyncs any wireless controller I have with the system. Arcade Chuck, who I bought this from, said they tried to contact Brooke. They can't get word back. Uh, they asked me if I would kind of do a diagnostic myself. Uh, it still works on the Xbox One S, perfectly fine. But here's the tricky part. And this is what took me forever to install this, is that on the Tournament Edition 1, for some reason, there is a plastic piece in the middle that runs the whole length of it. 
I had to take uh, drills and saws and cut out that whole middle. That took forever. I actually cut my hand in the process. The second version of this is completely hollow inside. So you don't have to worry about any of that. But I had this one lying around. I did scuff it up quite a bit, which is disappointing because it had been in the box for ages because I was never good at uh, Street Fighter 4. But now that I've got those installed, I don't know what I'm going to do. They're working on a PS5 patch, but if I can't get it to work with the Series X, which it's supposed to, other people have tweeted that it does, um, I guess this will just be... It's good from the 8-bit consoles all the way up to the PS4 and Xbox One uh, S-X. So uh, I guess for now, I mean, there's no real fighters on the new systems that I want to play. And I still have my uh, PS4 and Xbox One hooked up on the TV in the living room. So I got all the cables for this. This is another fun one to use. Now, these boards I bought as a bundle. It was a couple hundred dollars because you... Um, you can do it yourself, but it's much harder uh, to wire everything separately. What they do is they provide a cable that connects to this middle board that goes to all the buttons so you don't have to uh, solder anything. I did have to solder the buttons to the Cthulhu board. This isn't. This is just a clip-on. So uh, a little bit more expensive, but you get way more compatibility. So it's nice to break this bad boy out and finally use it. I will say it's very heavy with all that stuff installed. Uh, the last bit on the hardware front was I went to go play Skies of Arcadia Legends and my GameCube disk drive just did not work. I, I really didn't play the system much when it was new. I haven't played it much in years. The last time I played it was with the Game Boy Advance or Game Boy Player. I was going through one of the Zelda Game Boy Color games. Nothing, no problems. Went to do it the other day. Went straight to the main menu. As luck would have it, uh, I think it's Citrus 3000 or Dan... Black Bear, Black Dog Technologies was just about to release uh, another bundle or batch of their um, GameCube loader. So I bought one. Uh, they, they restocked it again, so they were out of stock for a long time, but I was able to put a bunch of stuff on there. Now, I also have an SD2SP here. Uh, that's because so far the loader does not let you write to the SD card. And what that means is you can't save your settings. But this does. So you install Swiss on this, adjust your settings, and that's primarily for this, the, uh, was it Mark II Eon? Because this is, uh, uses Wii uh, composite or Wii component cables with HDMI. Well, I play this on a component CRT TV or component enabled CRT TV. Problem is, this defaults to line doubling, which causes a scrambled screen. So unless you have a way to save the settings to turn that off, You'll just have to hook on HDMI, set the setting, then hook it into component every single time, which is just not feasible. So the SD2SP is only $11 from Castlemania Games, or I think $12. Uh, I got a, the smallest micro SD card you can get to put in it because it's just for settings, and I got the ISOs on the main card there. This never worked. This was a piece of shit. It was like a $10 um, SD card adapter that was supposed to load Swiss or... Uh, allow savings. It, it's not even, It's never been recognized, so that's just junk. Uh, so that's what I've been up to hardware-wise. Like I said, a bunch of games coming up, but I did take advantage of Black Friday and Cyber Monday and whatever all that stuff is and got some movies in. Uh, Best Buy, or who was it? Amazon and Barnes & Noble had their Criterion sale. So I picked up a handful of movies. They kept coming in damage, though. I've, I've never had this much difficulty with movies, so I bought uh, the game on Blu-ray, which I only ever had. Uh, my wife got me the first print of the DVD when it came out years ago. But I don't know if you can see there, something hit the case, and it's actually kind of, looks like mold or something. It's white right here. The first case I had actually had a hole in it. Something had pierced through the plastic. So this was the replacement. Amazon gets really testy about excessive replacements, so I just kept it, even though it, that just bugs the hell out of me. It's a, it's a minor thing. I don't even know if you can see it. You can see it. Good. That bugs the shit out of me. But great movie, though. We just rewatched it again. Loved it. Uh, another one I rewatched is Rashomon. I've had this on regular DVD, but not Blu-ray. looks fantastic. Um, it also has a little cut on the, the side, but again, just whatever. I was so tired of dealing with them by that point. Uh, a few times, the delivery people just left the boxes in puddles of water that had accumulated on a walkway instead of just putting them under an overhang that was dry. Don't know why they did it. They definitely delivered it when it was raining, so I guess they just threw it and ran. Uh, fortunately, this one didn't get wet, but it did get a little tear. But that's a great movie. I rewatched that one the other night. 
Um, this is this. Okay, until the end of the world, this was really hard to find until recently. I had to pay, it was like 60 or $70 for a German copy of this. And Silverfish ended up getting on it and eating the hell out of it because it came in this box set. This was really hard to get in English. This is from 1991. It's got William Hurt in it. And it uses a bunch of Sony prototypes. So it's very cyberpunk style, but with technology that actually ended up being used in uh, kind of later revision, later revised hardware models of, say, cell phones and uh, video conferencing and stuff like that, back when that wasn't common uh, and was very state-of-the-art. It's long. It's 267 minutes. On DVD, it's multiple discs. It's this long odyssey of William Hurt and this woman going all around the, the, the world. It's a it's a, a long movie. It can be very odd at times, but it's super interesting. And uh, yeah, this was like less than or more than half off. So I was happy to replace my messed up uh, regular DVD with that one. This is one I've, I don't own, but I had rented years ago. Quite on. This is an anthology, an old horror anthology, I believe from the '60s, uh, Japanese. I think it's four stories. And what was it 1965? Um, yeah, this was. It's always been highly reviewed. I enjoyed it when I rented it. I never picked it up on DVD or VHS, so I grabbed the Blu-ray. And I had never heard of this one until I was just kind of browsing what was for sale. Come and see. I, I've read it's a really rough watch. It's a Soviet-made film back in the 70s? No, 85. It's about a young teenager who was um, recruited during World War II and to fight Germany. And apparently he witnesses some wild stuff. And everyone just said this is a super depressing film. But um, I'm always interested in those kind of movies. And I had never heard of it. So it looked pretty good. I figured it was worth a shot for, I think it was like $12. Best Buy had a pretty steep discount on a bunch of their steel books. So I grabbed full, uh, a handful of Christmas movies. It's a Wonderful Life. This is cheaper uh, than it normally is on Blu-ray. And it's both four, it's got 4K, uh, Blu-ray, and digital. But the Blu-ray itself normally goes up to 20-something around the holidays. Uh, I don't own a Blu-ray of it. So this is an upgrade, a complete upgrade. And it was like $13 or $14. It was the most expensive, maybe a flat 20 because uh, some of these were really cheap. I got a Christmas story, which was like eight dollars. We actually just saw that in the theater. Theaters are um, renting themselves out for a hundred bucks. So as a Christmas gift, my wife rented out a theater, and me, her, and my dad went and watched a Christmas story by ourselves. No one else in the theater. Uh, it was it was really nice. Let's see. Uh, another cheap one was a Christmas vacation. This is another one I always watch. My dad loves it. Always quotes it. Um, I hadn't. I'm not a big fan of this, and I hadn't seen it in years, but my friend said the uh, the transfer of this looks amazing, and it was $8.99 or $9.99, so I went with Jaws. And the last one I picked up was the animated version of Ghost in the Shell. This is uh, the triple pack of 4K, Blu-ray, and digital. It's also a steelbook. Um, the art's pretty good on it. Uh, the uh, recently re-released regular 4K with the non-steelbook I kind of like the art a little more, but I still think this definitely looks really cool and um, happy to pick this up. I don't think I own this. I did own the Blu-ray of this years back, but I think I gave it to my wife's friend when she was looking for something to watch. But that's all. Next up, hopefully I'll film it in a couple days, is a bunch of games. Uh, thanks for watching, and I will talk to everyone later.